Quality control. It's absolutely quality control. They must be looking inside spirit. I know they've been looking inside spirit for months. Um, my guess is they've looked inside and they just feel like they can't control quality well enough as an outsider. They used to own spirit, not, not as it looks exactly now, but they used to own, you know, those, those facilities. Uh, it makes a uh, you know, majority of the 737 fuselage. It makes the front portion of the 787 two extremely important products. I think they've looked inside and they said, we can't control quality well enough from the outside. We got to buy this thing. Do we trust Again. Boeing to have the kind of quality control that Spirit needs? Boeing doesn't have a choice. Boeing's got to get quality control or they got a major problem on their hands. And so uh, I guess I think as an owner, uh, I think it is the path, probably a, a good path forward. Uh, I, I do think they will get the quality uh, issues in hand, but it's going to take some time. Uh, but they have to. They have, they have no choice. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, the stock of Boeing pretty much unchanged on the, the news here. If, I think if I were an investor in Boeing, I would think I may or may not, it may or may not make financial sense to own this spirit thing, but I would say it's probably the best way to move forward here. And, and I, when you talk to investors, George, yeah. how do, did they think that way? Uh, you know, I, I think investors, you, you know, I, I don't know that they, you could say they all monolithically think that way. Um, I think if there if there could have been a way to keep it outside, not have to buy it, um, uh, you know, I, I think they that probably would have please people more. I mean, there will be an unwinding required in this transaction, right? So Airbus is a A320, some of the components are made, Spirit. I'm, I'm imagining that Airbus is not going to be uh, interested in having, you know, Boeing as a subcontractor on their airplane, um, you know, and their, their other defense products, made, you know, for Lockheed and things like that. It's going to require some work to, I think, to unwind this thing a little bit. Uh, in order to, to, you know, in order to pull it inside of Boeing, probably energy you would prefer not Boeing to spend. But again, I think yep. it, it's their most important products are flowing through Spirit, and Spirit's been a source of the problems in some of those mm -hmm. products lately. And if Boeing is going to much higher production rates, which is where they're going to generate the cash flow they need, the profitability they need, they've got to stabilize production. And I think they you know, they must have looked at it and said, we got to own it. And so if you're an investor, I think you're eh, okay. Yeah, it's the way forward. I'd, I'd rather not have taken this path, but it's the way forward. Um, this is a leading question and it could be very wrong, but does this tell us anything about how bad things are at Spirit, that this is the option? I think it does. Again, so how I bad are does. things I at Spirit? That, <laughs> to me, it sounds like it's so bad they got to buy it. Um, <laughs> and I think that's bad, right? If you're if you're Boeing, you do want to preserve cash, right? You, you don't want to go make an acquisition. You got plenty of other things to manage right now. But uh, I think it means that, yes, the, the turnover at Spirit's been bad. Uh, the quality control, I think that's led to the quality control problems. You want to have your hand in how those line workers are being managed, how the quality control is being handled. Um, yeah, I think it means it was really bad at Spirit. All right, the shares of Spirit Aerosystems, SPR is the ticker for your Bloomberg terminal, up 14% uh, year to day trading has resumed here. So uh, obviously uh, the market signing pretty high probability that something will get done here. So George, just looking at Boeing holistically, you know, as you've told us in the past, you know, this is a scale business. You got to make as many planes as you can for that over that fixed cost base you have. Talk to us about the production yeah. goals. Or talk to us where they are in production today and where do they want to get to? And do you think that's a reasonable uh, glide path? Uh, so they are at 38 today. Although they'll tell you, even though their their suppliers are building at 38 and delivering the Boeing at 38, Boeing's not putting 38 out. So I I don't know. They're somewhere between. They're somewhere in the high 30s. Let's say depends what month it is. Uh, that, that that's on know, a per month basis, be, just in general. Uh, sorry, and that's on the 737. Yep, that's their most important product. Uh, on the 787, you know, we're in in the I think five is six ish area right now. Uh, uh, on 737, uh, you know, they've got goals to be into the 50s. They've, um, and at the end of the last expansion phase before the pandemic, before the max uh, crashes and groundings, you know, they, they were they were in the 60s. They're not going to go wow. to the 60s. 
Airbus is, you know, for the 737, Airbus is talking about going to 75 for the A320. So I think if you and I were inside the Boeing management meetings and they told you where they really wanted to go, they want to be up there near um, near Airbus, mm -hmm. you know, taking a 50-50 complement of this market. Is that the right place to go? Yes. Are they they're talking mid-decade? Yes. Probably pulling spirit inside. Timing probably had a lot to do with that too. They thought, look, how can we stabilize this the fastest because we don't want to keep giving away share to Airbus.